Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that won't nick or snag your nuts. So go to manscaped.com and use code Holly to get 20% off plus free shipping. What's it like as Phoenix Marie to date? <sighs> well, I mean, like, are you I, ever on any dating apps or anything like that? No or? dating apps. <laughs> that would never happen. I will never be on a dating app. Uh, I have dated in the industry, right? Like I said previously, I dated Christian for five and a half years. Five, five and a half. I don't know. At this point, it's all blurred together. Um, and it affects work a lot. Like, I dated Ramon Amar in the beginning. Like, actually, before I officially started dating Christian, I dated Ramon when he came over. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, 30 days of fucking seven times a day. And then we broke up, like, in the sweetest way ever. Like, you would never even, like, he makes me breakfast every morning. He cooks me dinner. Like, he is the most romantic sweetheart of a guy. He just wants to take care of people, especially in relationships. And then we were staying at like, cause I had just gotten into the in- industry and he had just gotten over here. I think I was in like six months and it was like right before I started doing anal on camera and everything else. So Ramon and me are living at like renting rooms in this big house Well, they were selling the house in 30 days from like that point. And we're like, Oh shit, we just connected. Da, da, da. He made me breakfast. He kissed me. He goes, are you okay, mommy? And we just fucked the whole night through. Right. We're fucking seven times a day going to work, fucking some more. And he's like, okay, he gave me a kiss and we like dissolved. And I was like, okay. And then I started being Christian, but Ramon didn't care who I fucked. He was just like, go ahead, mommy, whoever you want. I'm like, thanks. No problems, no stress. Then I did a Christian. And again, that backlash from people thinking, oh, well, X, Y, Z, whatever they wanted to think of him. And then he wouldn't let me work with certain people because he felt like it was inappropriate. They were disrespecting him or anything like that. Yeah. He definitely would get upset about, yeah. Yeah, you know, if you booked me with somebody else that wasn't him, he'd be like, what the fuck, Holly? You don't want to do it. And you're like. Oh, yeah, dude. or he'd call and like get, he'd call and want me, like if the girl didn't want to work with him, he wanted me to replace the girl. And I was like, I can't do that. Like the whole Yeah, especially not with your company. Girl. Like, are you kidding me? You're like, this girl is really hot. No offense, yeah. there's other dick. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's just not fair for us because – we're dating in an industry where people like you got Mark Wood and Francesca Lay, right? They're married. They just had their anniversary, right? I'm sure you saw it. Like they've been together so fucking long and they get it. It's go to work with whoever you want, have a good time, come home and you're back in that relationship. It's not carried over anywhere else. Then I dated a director uh, for a minute and that was fun. I think it lasted like 30 days too. And it was kind of funny because it was like, I really like you. I really like you. Like we'd have sex. Everything was great there in bed. Like good job. But then it started affecting, like I never got hired for that company again, whenever we kind of just went our own ways, nothing bad. We just did. And I was right. like, yeah. actually, I think I got back with Christian. Sadly, that's what happened there. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and then, yeah, no, it was really bad on and off. But the director still after that point, never hired me again. He was just like, Oh, I can't watch you have sex with other people anymore. Sorry. And I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. Who else did I date? I dated someone else in the industry. I dated someone outside of the industry for sure for three years, two years, three years, like kind of in that cusp area, uh, you know, again, on and off. I love that you're in porn. I hate that you're in porn. I love that you're in porn. I hate that you're in porn. And I'm like, listen, you're not fucking enough other people. So this is not going to work out. Dated a football player for a year. That was fun. Uh, dated. I mean, ultimately though, do you think the people that you dated who weren't in the industry, like, do you think that the demise of your relationship centered around the fact that you worked an adult? hundred percent. Just, they were just, they couldn't handle the the thought of you having sex with other men. Not even the thought of you having sex with other men. It becomes like a possession to them. The more they love you, the more they only want you for you. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not, Oh, I can't believe you're a whore. You're going and fucking all these dudes and on set and da, 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 da. And you're like, yeah, but I was doing this same time. And then they'll be like, well, you can fuck girls. Then you go to just fucking girls and then they get even more mad at you. And you're like, Oh, well, are you bi now? Do you only want bitches? Like what? And I'm like, dudes, I can't. And I, uh, the football player, we broke up because I wouldn't spend his money. Cause I had my own. That was like the funnest one I ever had for a breakup. They're like, yeah. So, uh, why didn't you charge the Louis Vuittons to the room? I'm like, cause I'm a grown ass bitch. It's my ABN award show and I'll buy my own shoes. Like, yeah. 
do is I find the stupidest reasons to argue with, with you. And you're just like, okay, fine. Like, I don't need to be with you. Have a nice day. For him, it probably would cement the idea that he had some kind of ownership over you because I sense that he struggled with a power dynamic with you because you're a strong woman. So the idea of not being able to have some kind of power over you, like I bought you all of these things, didn't agree with him. Oh, yeah. And like, I've never been someone to be bought. I, you know, I got out of the industry and luckily, like my OnlyFans pays my rent and everything else. But it was like, okay, I'm out of the industry. Like, there's no boys in my life. I'm just doing school stuff. And, you know, again, like I've been on and off with the doctor here, <laughs> which was is great. Like, we we get along amazingly and sex is amazing. And again, that was another thing is like, I was out of the industry and he kind of liked it that I was out of the industry. And then I told him, I want to get back in. And he said, well, I don't know how I feel about it. And I'm like, that's fine. But you met me as a porn star. You met me as Phoenix Murray. You had me in the office as Melissa all these days. I'm going to go be Phoenix on the other ones. And I'm not affecting your work. I'm not affecting like my cells or anything else like that. And he's just like, okay, I guess you're making your decision. I'm like, yeah. And then we broke up and then we got back together and then we broke up. And yeah, it is what it is, AKA why I'm doing this in the office and it's everybody's out of the office. <laughs> I, I do think that there is like a, a struggle. I think one of the the hugest problems with like monogamous relationships is is jealousy in a sense of ownership. I mean, I'm in a monogamous relationship. I've only ever been in monogamous relationships, but the difference between like my previous marriage was he really did like want to own me in some way. Like he would get very jealous of me just having male friends um, and that kind of thing. <sighs> And then, and my current husband has like zero jealousy issues, like absolutely none, like never questions me, like has no desire to own me, has never tried to behave in that way whatsoever. Actually, he, the other day he said to me, um, it was really sweet. He said, I forgot what brought this up, but he said, one of the things he said, I fell in love with you because you're the strongest woman I know. Oh, said, I that's that. why I love you because you're so strong and you can take care of yourself and like, mm-hmm. you don't need me. Like, I mean, I need him, but I don't need him. That's the thing. Like I finally come to this point in my life where like, if we broke up, I'd be devastated because I love him, but like my life wouldn't end. Like right. I could live without him. I don't, I could live without anybody. And it took me a while of me being single and finally coming to that conclusion where I was like, I actually don't need a man in my life to be happy. And then I found the right person, you know? I love it. No, I get it. Trust me. Like, that's where I felt like the doctor is that guy. But then, like, you know, sometimes that possession thing comes in and I'm like, it is the biggest turnoff to me. Like, I like the fact that you liked that I was going to set and having sex and then coming home to you and then you were fucking me afterwards. Like, I don't know. I liked it. Not like cuckoldy, but like the fact that I was a lust object turned him on. And, like, he had no idea who the fuck I was at all. Like, I met him at JC's birthday party, and it was like, who oh, is this doctor dude that just called me fat? The fuck? You know? And then it just ended up being like, hey, listen, we've been in on and off for, like, five and a half years. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Relationships but again, are so hard. I mean. <sighs> they are. I hate it. <laughs> Now that we've talked about how difficult it is to date, how could a normal everyday fan date you? Would that ever be possible? And if it was, how would they approach you about that? Um, I think a big thing is not being a fan. <laughs> like It's really hard for me to be with somebody who's a fan of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've only been with guys who aren't fans of me, actually. And it's really funny because like even the football player one, he's like, you're not my type. And still text me till today, like, hey, I wish I could see you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, I don't want to be that. Hey, listen, I have Phoenix Maria as my girl. And I feel like that's what happens if they've already met you and know you as Phoenix. Mm-hmm. If a guy hides it from me, that's a whole other thing. Like the one I had, like that two and a half year, like relationship one with a regular guy. He was a fan. He's like, oh, I didn't realize you were in that camper scene. I love that scene. I'm like, so you did know who the fuck I was. Like, why are you lying to me, right? It still worked out. But again, it started out funny games. And then it was like, no, I don't want you to be that person. And I'm like, and I feel like that happens with fans too. What do you mean you're still going to go have sex with 
X, Y, Z. Yeah, I'm going to go take Johnny Castle's dick down my throat right now. Got to go to work. Bye. You know, it just, I, I don't know if I can. I, I definitely have without knowing it, dated fans, but I don't know. I'm like, it's nothing against you guys. If you know me, don't say you know me. Don't act like a super fan. Just be very cool. Like, hi, how are you? Oh my God, you're pretty. Da, 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 da. And I can tell if you watched me though, just so you know. Treat, treat you like a human being. Yeah, but they don't know how. Like, and, and I get it. Like, if I were to see Jude Law pass by me right now, I'd be like, hello, sir. I yeah. don't want to fuck the shit out of you. Tom yeah. Hardy, hi. Shout out. I'm sliding my DMs. That's cool. But that, that's <laughs> where you know. And you can't hide the fact that you are so excited by that person, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you met somebody you wanted to fuck that was famous. Yes. Um, let's see. I mean, well, I did have this experience with, okay, I, de- I didn't want to have sex with him, but it was a fan. Everyone's uh, so I knew my, Anthony Hopkins okay. is married to a woman who used to work for my mom. Oh, how cool. Yeah. So, um, we once went to his house for lunch Hmm. And um, you know, like Anthony Hopkins, like Silence of the Lambs, yeah, like you think no, of him in no. all these different character ways, and and meeting him and having lunch with him and talking to him as a human being was a was a surreal experience. And it was, you know, and the whole time, of course, I'm thinking in my head, like act normal, act normal, act normal. Um, and I think I acted normal, but it, it it's but it's you so hard that. to get that out of your head, you know? Like, this is an incredibly famous person. Like, how do I ever treat you like a normal human being? How do I ever see you that way? And, um, you know, I feel like for celebrities, it's got to be really difficult because you never know, like, who loves you for who and who just wants something from you. Like, um, I think people are also confused about their own motivations in terms of like what they want from you. So I could see that you probably deal with that a lot yourself. This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Manscaped. Now we all love body hair on a man, but you still got to keep that under control. So in addition to Manscaped's Lawnmower 3.0, which is their revolutionary electric trimmer for your nuts, they will not nick or snag them. They have recently also come out with their Weed Whacker. This is an electric trimmer for your ears and your nose. Two other parts of your body that you definitely need to keep the hair under control. So go to manscaped.com, use code HOLLY, and get 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.